Hi everyone, I'd like to show you my latest project called DMG+. Before I begin, I have some fond memories of early 90s games. As you can see, the original Game Boy was made in 1989. And I'd like to show some of those games, because some of you might be too young to have lived during that period. Um, so there is a point to that, so please stay with me. So the first is Tetris. Actually, the Game Boy originally came with a Tetris cartridge. And I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of people played this as the first game on the Game Boy. This is actually Tetris DX. This is a newer version of Tetris. But Tetris is Tetris. The, the, the basics are still the same. You have a bunch of blocks that fall down and you gotta make lines in order to make them disappear. So let me quickly start this up. Yeah, whatever. So there we go. As you see, your standard Tetron, 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 um, Tetris shapes falling down. And as soon as you make a line, it disappears. And the idea is that you keep doing that. No, nope. and not make holes like I did just now and rack up a score. And as soon as you fill the entire screen, it's game over. So, that is Tetris. Um, obviously that wasn't the only game that Nintendo had. Nintendo still is very known for its Mario franchise, uh, about an Italian plumber that mostly performs platforming things. So I'll also show you some of that. I'll probably be horrible at it because I'm playing through the camera viewfinder. So this is Super Mario World, which was also pretty popular and a whole bunch of people will be going like, oh yeah. So as I said, it's, it's your old standard platformer. Um, so you have little Mario here, he can jump and he needs to jump on top of enemies. And the, the deal is effectively that you keep going right until you get to the end of the level. So it's got a really nice level design, really nice music as well. Well, etc. you get the point. Hey. Mushroom. Anyway, um, obviously Nintendo wasn't the only company making games. You also had uh, their big competitors around the time, uh, Sega. And Sega had their own, uh, their own mascot, effectively, which also uh, featured in a platformer. And that was obviously Sonic. So here's a Sonic game. Music is also outstanding. Sonic games tend to be a little bit more fast-paced. And the mechanic here is actually that you have these rings that you can collect and those act as health. So if you run into an enemy um, and you're not spinning, then you lose a bunch of rings as you can see there. So you gotta collect more of them. And I think they're also a bonus at the end of the level. And it's a really nice game. It's really super fast, uh, fast paced. Sorry, glare. Game Boy screens aren't the best. Anyway, you get the point. So platformers were really uh, big during the early 90s, but uh, during the later years uh, we got more different games and uh, it was actually the heyday of the 3D games. And obviously the most well-known 3D game, actually the one that started the genre more or less, you had earlier 3D games, but this one got really big. Um, that is obviously uh, Doom. And uh, this used to be like we were gawking at our 486 machines at that time uh, just because this was so realistic. It actually was three-dimensional and uh, it was really fast-paced. And, and well, to be fair, as young ones, also the gore <laughs> kind of appealed to us. So let me quickly play you through the first 
game, uh, the, the first level. Actually, if you had a sound card around the time, the music is also pretty good. Uh, let's see, there's a guy there. Hey, come on! I'll try to keep the Game Boy in view, but like the screen is not that good. So I hope you can see it. Oh, that guy there. I'll ignore him. And this is the end of the level already. And that's Doom. So I hope you enjoyed those games. And at this point most of you will probably be uh, looking at the screen and going like, wait, that's not real. And that's absolutely right, because that DMG Plus project I talked about before, this is it. So what's the deal here? Well, this is the main board from this Game Boy. And the reason that this main board is here outside of the Game Boy and not inside the Game Boy is because I replaced it, and I replaced it with uh, a with this PCB, well, a version that actually does contain parts. And this PCB has on one side an FPGA to interface with all the Game Boy peripherals and also uh, to read the original Game Boy cartridges. And on this side uh, is a Raspberry Pi Zero, and the Raspberry Pi Zero actually runs emulators and games um, in case of an original Game Boy cartridge. It can actually read the Game Boy, Game Boy cartridge and um, emulate the game that's on there. And if it's a replication cartridge, like these ones, then it just reads the game name. Oh, focus. Well, these ones. Uh, it just reads the game name and starts up a local application. So for instance, Doom is the Raspberry Pi native version. And that way I have a Game Boy that looks entirely stock, but can play a whole bunch more games than the original could. Anyway, hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching.